One of the key ingredients of leadership is vision. Ability to see the future from today. And the leader is that madman who sees the future and goes to the future, hook himself up there while calling others to come. So they do something unusual. That is a visionary leader. No wonder the Bible says, where there's no vision, my people perish. The Bible does not say where there's no money. So money is not a factor in leadership. Vision is all about leadership. In the same process, the good governance is simply the mission of a vision. The byproduct of every good vision is good governance. So you cannot have a good governance if the leader does not have vision. And the only connecting wheel upon which both leadership and mission will rotate is what is called passion. So passion is that inner unlimited desire to achieve a goal. So leaders must be passionate about what you believe in. I don't know how many of you have um, experienced what is called passion. When you're not passionate about what you do, people will not believe you. When I came in as governor of Imo State, I told them that Imo State is the richest state in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. And everybody laughed at me the first time. Ha! When we know that what you collect in a month is probably what some, what you collect in a year is what some states collect in a month. But I wasn't talking about money, I was talking about vision. I was talking about my passion to develop the state. That is why if you do not have passion, you cannot be a leader. In other words, passion is very key if leadership must succeed. Then good governance is, of course, like I said, is only a product of a good vision. And good governance is what people refer to as, as the dividend of democracy. Ability to deliver on your promise, ability to deliver on your vision, or that which you have imagined. That is why the best profession I like, if I have opportunity to go back to school, is architecture. I want to be an architect. Because an, an, an architect is that man who sits down, imagines something, and puts it down on a paper with a passion to achieve it. That is vision expressed. It is only what this uh, vision has been achieved that you call it a uh, mission or you call it good governance. So do not blame any leader who is not able to deliver on his promise of democracy. It simply means that that leader lacks the vision to achieve it. So both vision and good governance are two good bedfellows. They are husband and wife. And it is only when this is done that the issue of human rights can be talked. And I've heard my professor talk about human rights. Let me tell you my concern about human rights. The worst form of human rights is poverty. I tell people that in the course of anabolism, catabolism, which leads to metabolism in the digestive system, anytime there's no article of food or particle of food in the system, and the Asians begin to chew the person's stomach. That is the worst form of human right abuse. <laughs> so nations that have not been able to provide for their citizens, especially as it lists the stomach, is called a failed nation. But to define human rights, human rights simply means do unto others that which you think is good for you. We have had so many cases of human rights abuse, especially as prevalent, like the orientation that man told me. Yes, we used to think that is flogging people and beating people and doing that. There cannot be a human rights abuse if you have a visionary leader of either that company or society. It is when people have failed in their vision that they begin to intimidate people and compelling them to do certain things for them. Example is African leaders, where people want to stay put in office for life. 
So human right abuse is inevitable where there's visionlessness in a nation, society, or corporate organization. Let me ask a few questions. Then does it mean that leadership, does it connect power and authority? Because sometimes we mistake that leadership means the ability to have power as a governor or have authority as a, as a, and a commander in any of the armed forces and asking people move this way. Does that doesn't mean leadership? Does leadership mean victory at the poor? When you must have manipulated election and get victory and you say you're a leader? There's more to leadership than just power and authority. Leadership has to do with love and care for others other than yourself. So leaders must never be selfish. Anywhere you see a selfish leader, watch his style. All his actions is about me, my family, and I. And when he begins to run into trouble, watch his second style. He starts telling you where he comes from. <laughs> That's division. That's what they call tribalism. Sectionalism. Those are all ingredients of bad leadership. And before you know it, he turns the whole exercise into ethnicity. If, for instance, he's from a zone in a state, he begins to tell his zonal people that, look, this zone is against us. <laughs> and yet he's a governor of the entire state. That is failure chapter 1, verse 1. <laughs> I, I'll tell you that I might sound controversial. I'm trying to guide my language. <laughs> so for us, leaders, Leadership is everything. Wherever you see a state not doing well, a nation not doing well, please hold the leader responsible. I don't like this idea of uh, you must have good followers to have a good leader. That is not, it doesn't make sense. If not, why are you called a leader? The leader is to correct those sheep and put them in the right direction. So leaders must take responsibility. That's the second point I'm making. Leaders must take responsibility. Often they're not in Africa, even in Nigeria, even in our society. Watch. The idea thing for me to be doing now as a governor of Himo State is to blame the previous governor. And the previous governor will blame the governor before him. And that one will blame the one that has died in Bakwe. Mbakwe will wake up and one man blame. Then one will wake up this and blame. Next one will blame. Then the man who died so many years ago will say, no, not me, it's you, the first one. <laughs> Anywhere you see leaders not taking responsibility, that leader is a visionless leader. And every problem which a leader misses on his way is a problem meant to be solved by that leader. Boko Haram is a problem meant to be solved by members of this generation and leadership of this generation. Kidnapping is a problem meant for us to solve. So leaders don't shift responsibilities. And when you shift responsibilities, human rights abuse is inevitable. 